Today we're doing a <clears throat> high idle mod on a six liter excursion. And uh, there's a real good forum post on how to do this that is very explanatory and it, it's pretty easy to do. That's what I'm going off of to do with this one. But <clears throat> I just always like a video, so I thought I'd do a video. I hadn't been able to find one myself, so anyway, just started off by disconnecting my negative battery terminals. And I've still got the the battery cover for, for my battery. And it just sits on top of the battery down there, so because of that I had to disconnect the positive cable also. But you know, obviously you don't let this touch anything because the other side's still touching the positive post. Um, and anyway, then you get to your PCM. As you can see, I've already disconnected this connector. And that empty hole right there on the side is where we're going to be trying to put our connection there. And <clears throat> we're going to just drill it out. I got to take the back cover off still. Just wanted to show you what I had so far. And it was pretty easy to pull out of there. So don't be scared of it. Uh, these little pieces here, they just clip them back and then see how that came loose and then as you push it back it actually kind of pulls the plug out a little bit and then you pull it out the rest of the way so I'm gonna lock that back in place there but anyway and I did double check the the PCM does have the actual pin there I don't know if I'll be able to get in there where you can see it or not yeah you can kind of barely see it it's the third one up and those ones all the way to the far left right there that one right at the end of my middle finger middle of my finger that's actually going to be connecting to so i'm gonna work on peeling the back of this cover off here oh and i i don't think i mentioned it yet i will also try to embed in this video if i can figure it out i'm kind of new to posting youtube i will also uh embed that thread for where I got the instructions to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that cover off and see how that goes. Okay, now to get this cover off, there's these little clips one on either side, one right there, one right there. And I'm just gonna take my screwdriver, pop it up under there. Get that thing loose. And it's got some on the underside too. I'm not gonna be able to keep keep videoing and do this at the same time, so I'll get those underside ones loose once I get this off. I'll keep going. Okay, so I got got the bottom ones popped loose. Just pull that the rest of the way off. And then it'll just pop right back on there whenever I'm ready. So now I have this exposed. And you can see right below this green and yellow wire is where that one's going to go. in that pin to hook it up so now I'm going to drill that out <clears throat> they recommended I've seen uh, 5 30 seconds bit I think I'm going to try a size smaller see if that'll work basically just going to try to get the wire through and just kind of get stuck in there best I can so to get onto that pin so uh, I'll get that done and go from there Okay, now for a connector, just kind of rigged something up. Uh, some guys have gone as far as to chase down an old harness to pull the connector out of, or just go to the parts counter and get that little piece, but I didn't have that, so I took one of these. It's basically that heat shrink butt connector, and 
peeled all the shrink off of it and I just kept crimping this one end down those pins are a flat pin inside there and I just kept gently squishing this one end down until it slid on there just almost perfectly and I'm expecting when it's plugged in I went ahead and pulled my battery out just so I'd have a little bit easier access to you can see those pins are flat and so this slides on it real good so now I'm gonna try to drill this piece out here and basically I'm I'm on I'm going to use the I believe it's the 530 seconds no excuse me I'm gonna use a 960 forts bit let me see if I can hold this here It's kind of hard to hold this and do this by myself but as you can see it's just about the perfect size it's just a little bit bigger than my connector so I'm basically just going to be threading my wire through and just kind of trying to get it up in there for when I plug the harness back in so that'll be about a good size to be sure and get the get the piece through and see how it all plugs up Okay, I got my hole drilled. See through there. It's a little nerve wracking. Trying not to mess his harness up. And I really didn't get it very straight either. I should have got it a little more to the right from this viewpoint, but we'll see how it works. I think it's gonna work all right still. I'll, I'll try to put it in there and I'll get that wire threaded through and go from there. Okay, got my wire threaded through. Then I'm gonna run to the switch. Got my piece crimped on. Now I'm gonna see if I can get this stuck down in that hole there like I want. I'm gonna need two hands to do that. All right, you can see I got her stuck down in there. Looks like it might be just a little bit off from where those pins go in, so I'm hoping that one will go in okay. In fact, I might even just try bending that that one pin just a little bit over to make sure it'll thread okay. Of course, obviously, you don't want to get too rambunctious with it. You don't want to screw this PCM up and make a... I have no idea how much this ain't cost, but I know it's over a thousand dollars, I think. So, not to mention I got my SCT program in it right now, so I don't want to lose that. Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to try plugging it in, see how it goes. All right, it, it actually went on there very well. See, it's locked back down on. Got my wire running out here. I put this cover back on before I plugged it back in. I could have waited until after um, to do it since I don't have the battery in here. But, uh, okay, so now before I go to the trouble of hooking the uh, running the wire into the cab and all that I'm gonna go ahead and drop my battery back in here hook the cables back up and I'm just gonna strip the end of this little roll of wire I have here it's just a roll of wire I had sitting in the toolbox so it's nothing special it's just some 16 gauge wire and then I'm gonna touch it to the positive battery post and that art of show whether it's going to work or not so get that buttoned up I'm back i got my battery back in see here's the cover i was talking about i pulled off everything's tucked in under there real nice and neat i'm going to use this is one of the customer pass-through wires here that goes up underneath the cab this will be the wire that i will hook up to the switch in the cab but as i said first i'm going to try it out so I'm fixing to crank it up. You do have to have the emergency brake set, and I do have it pushed in already. So now we're going to give her a crank, and uh, 
see what she does. Okay, we're running. And this is a moment of truth to blow out my PCM or does the idle speed up? Okay, so our test was successful. So now I'm gonna just hook this wire onto this said this customer cert customer use wire here. It's gonna go up inside the cab. So butt connect that there and then we'll go up under the dash. Okay, we're under the dash now. Uh, and one thing I've seen from other forums is this uh, good wire to get. Because you just really want a wire that's got power when the ignition is on. Is find your loop that's coming down to your diagnostic port. And then you're going to find this little wire right here just sitting there. And it's supposed to have juice whenever the ignition key is on. So I'm going to use that for my power source. Run it over to my switch. And... So obviously I'm going to test it with my tester just to make sure that's all it is. And uh, and then the other end of that upfitter wire, I think that's what they call them. Extra wires, customer service wires. Kind of hard to get at a good angle under here. It's on this loom. There's actually all those wires. You have the black wire, the blue wire, the white wire, and the red wire. Like I said, I hooked onto the red wire on the other side up in the engine compartment. So that's what I'm gonna connect to my switch. And then I will connect to my switch to this other wire here. And then it'll have power and see how it goes. All right, I got my switch wired in, put it right here. It's actually where my selector switch for my Banks tuner used to be before I got my SCT, so I just kind of used the same hole I was using before. They're next to the steering column. And I hooked up to that wire down in there, you can kind of see it there. And then tied on to that. Everything just keeps getting in the way. Here he is. Tied onto this other wire here. Now we'll flip the switch. And there she goes. Turn the switch off, back to regular out. And I got some stiction issues going on, so it ain't running real smooth right now. I just put some hot shot in it, gonna see if it clears it up. But uh, anyway, that's basically pretty much it. Just button up the covers back here and I'm all done. From the time I started, it's only taken me just almost two hours and that's stopping in between and trying to videotape stuff so i'm sure if you're just doing it by yourself at the house hour hour and a half you probably knock it out pretty easy um anyway that's about it oh and i, I was going to mention too you do not have to have the brake set i said earlier you had to have the parking brake set for it to work but you do not and i don't know if that's just on the excursion 
It must be because everyone I saw, the guys did it on a truck. They had to set the parking brake. So all I have to do is flip this switch and then it'll speed up. So y'all enjoy. If y'all want to know how to do the tackle on the odometer, I got another video showing how to do that. So check out my other videos. And y'all have a great day.